Now an estimated 75,000 vaccines were ordered for the current flu season and health officials from the Ministry of Health are advising members of the population to get vaccinated. Joining me to talk more about the benefits of the influenza vaccine is Manager Expanded Program on Immunization, Nurse Grace Sukchan. Grace Sukchan, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Now. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here this morning. Now, Nurse Sukchan, before we get into the discussion about the benefits of the influenza vaccine, I wanted us to just find a difference between the two because some people may feel they have the flu and they have the influenza and vice versa. So what's the difference between the flu and the cold, the common cold? So influenza and common cold are both, firstly, contagious respiratory illnesses, but they are caused by different viruses. So for instance, the influenza is caused by the influenza virus, whereas the common cold are caused by rhinoviruses, parainfluenza viruses, and of course, seasonal coronaviruses. Right. And is the, are the symptoms similar or do you have different symptoms for each? They do have similar symptoms, eh? but it can be difficult to differentiate sometimes between them based on symptoms alone. In general, influenza, however, is more worse. The symptoms are more worse than the common cold, and symptoms typically become more intense. And um, in general, you know, it, it comes on more abruptly than the common cold. Influenza is worse in that it... Um, you have more than just runny nose or stuffy nose, which is common, it, which are usually a common cause. Persons complained of um, lethargy, uh, body pains, um, severe headaches. Some people, uh, they can develop problems such as pneumonia, bacterial infections, and a lot of persons end up in hospital as well with the influenza. Wow. Now, with the influenza, do you also have the symptoms such as fever and coughing and, you know, even that, um, that kind of raspy cough where something is on, your, is on your chest? That's right. And that's what, you know, you can develop bronchitis or pneumonia, but you have a more heaviness on the chest area. They coughed. It, it, it's sort of more painful mm -hmm. than if you have the common cold, which is normally you might get a mild fever, runny nose. Your sinus may become a bit blocked, but then it normally clears up. You can get up you can go to work you can go to school with a common cold but with influenza you feel ill your body feels weak and nurse why is it important for us to get the um, the influenza vaccine especially at this time so influenza vaccine what it does is that it may not prevent you totally from getting the, the virus but what it does is that it helps your body build a, a stronger immune response so that you don't get severely ill. Okay. And also, because I know that the Minister of Health would have had um, a press conference last week, Wednesday. And just to confirm the figures on the Sukchan, do you know how many people mm -hmm. uh, have been admitted to the hospital or even how many deaths we've had uh, for the year thus far as a result of the flu? Right. So... Firstly, uh, let me say so far that we've had uh, for, uh, as of October the 21st, we had for 564 cases of the influenza. And out of that, we had, yes, unfortunately, we had three deaths. But please be mindful, those deaths are in the, uh, were in the elderly persons. And these were persons who also had chronic diseases or as we called comorbidities. Right. So then and hence the reason why that's a high risk group. Right. Because I was also going to ask you as well, the high risk group. Mm -hmm. So we have the elders in there. Who else might be a bit more vulnerable to this virus? So on our list of high risk, we have children who are from six months to five years of age. Of course, we have our pregnant mothers. These are uh, this category, we need to be very careful that we don't want them getting the influenza virus during this time. Their body are more susceptible and they could get seriously ill and end up with um, premature labor and complications. We also have, of course, our healthcare workers. We advise our healthcare workers because they are at risk. Everyone that comes into a health facility that may present with the influenza virus uh, can pass it on to the healthcare workers. And all persons living with chronic disease conditions are also a high risk group. And in terms of the uh, health centers where people can go to get the, the vaccine, can you share that with us as well? Right. 
So the, the vaccines are available at most health centers across the country. Um, the list has been published in the press and are available on the Ministry of Health website and of course our social media pages. Right. Now going back to the different um, strains, um, Nurse Sukchan, can you share with us exactly the different strains of the influenza virus? Right. So the vaccine we have uh, covers for uh, three strains in particular. We cover for the H1N1 and then the A3N2, which is a prevalent strain that is now circulating. And of course, a B influenza. Right. And I know that um, I think it was Minister Dial Singh who said there's also a strain A. Um, is it that which causes the COVID-19 virus? Is that the one you mentioned before with the H1N1? Right. So, yes, the type A is the H1N1 and, of course, the A3N2. So there are two type A in the vaccines that we brought that, you know, that was prepared for us. And then, of course, there's one B strain, the influenza B strain. And these are the three most common ones that are circulating. Now, since it, it causes the COVID-19 virus, there may be some people who might think about taking the flu vaccine rather than the COVID-19 vaccine. I mean, how do you respond to that one? Okay, so let me first say that when we say that um, you the covered cold are caused by seasonal coronaviruses, these are viruses, you have over a hundred of them, but this is not the same as the SARS-CoV-2. Let me again emphasize, it is not the same as the COVID virus that is circulating now and the ones that we've been vaccinating the population against. There's a difference between seasonal coronaviruses. We have over a hundred of these viruses that circulate and can cause uh, respiratory symptoms. People can develop the common cold with it, but it is not the same as the SARS-CoV-2 virus that we have been vaccinating that caused the pandemic. Mm. So then, Nurse Sukchan, is it possible for somebody to get the COVID-19 vaccine and then right after get the flu vaccine, or how will it work? Right. What we advise persons to do is to take the influenza vaccines either two weeks before or two weeks after you would have taken the COVID-19 vaccines. Right. But we don't advise that you take it together. Right. And then this will this will also um, apply as well when we're talking about the booster shot or the second shot of the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine? Correct. That is okay. correct. However, right. the influenza vaccines can be taken with your routine vaccines. Okay. When we talk about your hepatitis vaccines, um, you know, tetanus vaccines, you can take your influenza vaccines at the same time with those other vaccines. But it is not advisable to take it together with the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, Ms. Sukchan, I know that some people may have, um, they, well, they would have had actually allergic reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine. Will we see these sort of same symptoms when they take the flu vaccine as well? Right. So what is normally reported um, for period of time in, in terms of side effects with the influenza vaccines, most persons usually complain a bit of redness and discomfort in the arm where they got the vaccines. You may have a mild swelling in that area. Some persons complain of feeling a little soreness in their throat, um, maybe very rare a mild headache. But uh, in terms of having severe side effects, that has not been reported. However, we advise persons, if you've had influenza vaccines and you reacted to that vaccine, please let your healthcare provider know what sort of reaction that you had when you took the previous influenza vaccines. And then that the healthcare provider will determine whether you can have the vaccines or not. Right. No, but generally, to... our response has been well. Right. Now, going back to that high risk uh, group, particularly pregnant women, um, is mm -hmm. it a certain time that they are advised to take the vaccine? First trimester, second trimester, or it doesn't really matter once they get protected? That's right. It does not matter what stage of the pregnancy you are at, but you are advised to take the vaccine. Right. Now, I know that uh, CMO had mentioned last week that I think the flu season usually runs from October to May. But what was happening was that That's he was correct. seeing a lot of flu cases in the population from since August. I mean, is there any reason why we may have been seeing cases earlier than was expected? 
Right, so what we, the virus, the vaccine covered for is the Northern Hemisphere. We have to be mindful there's another hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, that we don't really normally see. But we also have to be um, aware of the fact that we have um, international travel. So persons can come into the country and bring the virus into the country. And in terms so of it just... maybe a reason why. Right. Now, Nurse Luke Chan, while you are promoting the, the benefits of the vaccine, there are people who will still be like, you know what, I am going to take my vitamin C's, I'm going to get that extra exercise. Is there anything you can tell the population in terms of at least protecting themselves from the influenza virus? You know, during the past two years when we were fighting the pandemic, you would have realized that we, we hadn't seen or heard about the, the info. In fact, we were not testing positive cases. But even though we were doing tests, they were not picking up uh, positive cases. And this is because we were very mindful of the um, health precautions. We were wearing masks, we were washing our hands, we were sanitizing. And that's how you can stop the spread of any virus whether it is the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus or the influenza virus or even the common cold. So we advise persons to continue being vigilant out here. Wear your mask if you want to. It's up to you. It's optional. You can do that. Uh, wash your hands. Sanitize as much as possible. Again, we also advise persons cough and sneeze in a, a disposable tissue or in your elbows, the crook of your elbow, so that you don't cough on person and pass the virus on. And of course, if you fall in any of the high-risk categories that were listed, we advise you, we strongly advise you to go to your health center and get the vaccines because that is an additional form of protection for you and for your loved ones as well. Now, do you see any problems with the elderly who are at those elderly homes? Is it going to be a problem to vaccinate them as well? It, absolutely not. What we normally do in the RHAs normally do that is that they form a team and they visit all these homes because these are high risk persons and they normally go every year, visit these homes and, you know, ensure that uh, persons are vaccinated. In fact, some of the nurses, uh, apart from the routine vaccines, will visit homes where you have persons who are unable to come to the health facilities and give them the vaccines. Right. And this just going back to the art population or the three people who would have died. Uh, do we anticipate any more deaths? I mean, is there, is it that if the, 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 the flu is very, very, um, is it that it's really going to affect that high risk group so much that we may see more deaths coming down to the end of the year or even at the end of the flu season? Well, you know, Every death is, is, is really a tragedy. It's, it should, it should, we should, have, you know, try to avoid it as much as possible. We don't ever anticipate that. We try as much as possible to avoid this. And this is why we are asking the population to be extremely vigilant. Even if you are out there and you know, you're, you're, you know, you have elderly parents or persons with a chronic disease or who are immunocompromised for whatever reason, you know, we encourage them to get vaccinated in terms of estimating that, yes, we'll have a, a, um, an, a high number of deaths or more deaths. It's really hard to predict that. We really hope that is not the case. And this is why the Minister of Health, the Chief Medical Officer, came, you know, on, on, on television and, and was letting the population know this is what is happening. You know, please be aware that the virus is about, it is spreading. Unfortunately, we had three deaths. But if we vaccinate the high-risk group, then we don't propose to see or expect to see more deaths. I know that 75,000 was procured at least for this flu season. Do you anticipate that it's going to be used? Or, I mean, given um, trends that we would have seen in the past, is it always a good turnout for the population to use all 75,000? That's a very good question. Eh? And from past, from the pattern we've observed in the population, usually when we have deaths, once people start reporting deaths, we find persons, you know, they rush to the facilities and they're anxious to get the vaccines. During the COVID pandemic, we still ordered vaccines. And um, the uptake was extremely low because people, again, was vigilant. We're not hearing about the influenza circulating mm -hmm. and the vaccines really. We had a lot of vaccine that was unused. Now that we are seeing that the, the cases are rising with respect to influenza vaccine, influenza uh, viruses, sorry. And, um, you know, 
we know that the, the reported cases are high. We expect the demand to be there. And that is why we ensure that all health facilities, uh, you know, the, the health centers and even the hospitals have vaccines for their high risk uh, population. Right. So we expect and, a good turnout. Right. And finally, Nurse Sukchan, anything you want to add before we close? I just want to say that, you know, um, we battled for two years the pandemic, the Ministry of Health worked really hard to ensure that, you know, the population had access to the vaccines. We are asking persons again with the influenza vaccines, don't wait until you hear of someone whom you know got the vaccines and end up in hospital seriously ill or God forbid die. Please, if you are one of the high risk categories mentioned here. Again, let me emphasize children six months to five years of age, healthcare workers, pregnant women, persons who have any form of chronic disease or you are immunocompromised, please go out there, get your vaccines, protect yourselves, protect your loved ones. Again, remember the public health measures. Do not go around coughing and sneezing on persons. Use disposable tissues. If you, were, if you have virus, any form of virus, it is advisable to wear your mask because you do not want to contract anything else as well that is circulating thin out there. I think people have to be mindful of the fact that we still get in the COVID-19 cases. So you may think you have the common cold and it could very well be that. So you need to be mindful and be vigilant. You could have the influenza virus and not know. It also means you can pass it on to other persons. So again, please be very careful out there. Nice. Nurse Sukchan, thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show and just reinforcing the importance of getting that influenza vaccine. Have a good day. You too. Thank you so much. And that was Manager Expanded Program on Immunization at the Ministry of Health. Nurse Grace Sukchan just sharing the importance of getting the influenza vaccine. Remember, the flu season has started. It's from October to May. So to protect yourself against, you can either get the vaccine or ensure that you are washing your hands and being, you know, socially distant. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.